I'm going to try to go over um, sleep briefly here. Um, I'd hate to gift anything short trift, but um, we will be here as a panel um, after the break, and you guys can ask as many questions as you like um, in an hour. Let me just go over, and I want to point out just a few things about sleep. Again, I want to sort of acknowledge Dr. Holly Skinner uh, from Advent Health who helped put together this talk for us today. Okay, here. Um, so sleep is a big issue. Obviously, we all need a good night's sleep, and sleep gets disrupted in multiple system atrophy for many, many different reasons. Um, common things happen in, in other Parkinson's disorders as well. But these are many some of the symptoms, basically, that we see in MSA. Um, insomnia, daytime sleepiness, restless legs, uh, we call REM sleep or sort of dream enactment behavior, and then disordered. I'm just going to go over them very briefly here if I can. Okay. So insomnia, so problems with sleep are very, very common in patients. Um, on the right hand side, I'm just going to show you, these are polysomographs, okay? This is what we do. Uh, we bring patients in um, and do formal sleep testing. We put wires on the head and we look at your sleep cycle. And essentially the way we look at sleep cycle is there are stages of sleep. The first stage of sleep really we enter is what's called REM sleep. REM is what's called rapid eye movement, okay? You're supposed to be dreaming. Your eyes move when you dream and your body's supposed to be atonic or not moving, okay? Um, and you can see here that you go through different stages of sleep, stage one, two, three, three, four, really a deep sleep. That's what you want. And people kind of cycle through, but this is a normal person where they have nice, long stage three, four sleep here. This is insomnia with a lot of different arousals here. There are lots of different reasons people have insomnia. Um, and these are some of the different kind of issues, okay? Um, with multiple system atrophy, the discomfort can be there, there can be agitation, there can be the urinary issues, getting up so many times to go pee, um, and other issues that can disturb sleep here, okay? So these are just general strategies, I'll let you have these slides essentially, but basically, Number one really is just practicing good sleep hygiene, okay? Getting ready for bed, okay? Trying not to eat late at night, um, trying not to drink after dinner if you possibly can. Um, you know, excessive daytime napping or sleeping can sort of interrupt your sleep cycle, okay? Um, you know, switching day versus night also, okay? Um, and you try not to get out of bed if able, you know, is one of those other things you can do, avoiding prolonged time. Um, as well here, and then considering sort of referrals if you're having a lot of disturbed behavioral problems uh, for sleep here, listed on the bottom. So MSA, there are a number of different strategies that we can do uh, for sleep here, okay? If you're having trouble with sleep, there's a natural drug called melatonin. Melatonin's an, actually a natural chemical your brain makes um, to regulate your sleep cycle day and night. This is a herbal supplement that you can buy over the counter. I think, I, how many people have actually tried this? Probably quite a few. Okay, um, it's very well tolerated. Again, your brain makes it. It's a safe drug to try. Actually, the key really is that you need to take it about an hour or two before you want to fall asleep. Okay, they do make a long-acting melatonin that you can buy over the counter, an extended-release melatonin now that might keep you asleep a little bit longer. Um, but generally, this helps regulate your sleep cycle. Um, we can do things like treat depression, anxiety. A lot of people lay there in bed and ruminate, okay, because they have anxiety or, or mood issues. If that needs to be treated if it is present. Um, there are other things that are listed in here I can go over. I'm going to go over sort of the obstructive sleep issues. If you do have what's called COPD or obstructive sleep issues, sorry, excuse me, sleep, um, obstructive sleep apnea, then you need to be treated with a CPAP, okay, often. Um, and then treating those urinary issues listed here as well. Okay, um, antispasmodic agents can be used. Um, one that we probably didn't have time to talk about is this drug called desmopressin. So this regulates your urination, so that can sometimes help with frequent urination at night, in particular if given at bedtime uh, for some patients. So, um, daytime sleepiness. Common complaint among patients a lot of times, okay? So, um, if it's really bad, this can lead to sort of falling asleep. Um, if it's happening during meals, this is a big problem. Of, as you're starting to eat and get these sudden sleep attacks, there are a lot of things that contribute to this. So disordered sleep, um, sleep deprivation because you're not getting sleep at night. Um, there are problems with um, the sleep-wake cycle. And then medications, medications, medications can affect your sleep cycle as well. Okay. Um, Daytime sleepiness, okay, things you can do. As I mentioned, drugs are a big thing. Look for the drugs, okay, have your doctor review those medications to see if anything's affecting that. Get a sleep study if you don't know exactly why you're not sleeping and you're daytime sleeping in. Um, 
People have tried stimulants. There are a number of them that are out there. A lot of them are controlled substances. Um, they don't really work very well and they haven't really been validated in the MSA. And that's not to say we can't try them, but um, just understand that they may have limited benefit in this patient population, okay? So let's talk about what are called polysomnia. So these are sleep disruptions, okay? Restless legs is one of the most common forms of this activity. So this is sort of a symptom that a lot of patients come um, to. This is sort of the symptom that you get usually later in the day where you feel this sort of creepy crawly sensation in your leg and this urge to have to move them, okay? Um, this usually occurs when you're at rest or when you're trying to go to sleep and it's very disruptive, okay? Typically patients want to get up and they have to walk around. So this can happen multiple times in the instance, um, type of multiple system after than the cerebellar type, okay? There are a few things to look for. Um, there are what we call primary restless legs and secondary. Secondary due to causes such as neuropathy and then low iron. So iron deficiency can be a treatment for your restless leg symptoms, okay? There are medications that can actually cause restless legs, so stopping those medications can be helpful. There are lots of things out there these days that can treat restless legs. Um, probably people out here in the audience may have tried things like dopamine agonist type drugs. Those are very commonly and they're even advertised on TV um, to treat this. Other medications like gabapentin can be really helpful. In some cases, we need to use stronger medications and even pain medications to treat this. Um, uh, watch out for the medications. There are other alternative therapies listed down below like compression devices and things to help with, with patients. Um, special mention needs to be given for this REM sleep behavior disorder. This can be very disruptive. Um, REM sleep behavior disorder has been recognized and increasingly recognized as a risk factor for Parkinson's as well as dementia. Okay, so, um, and it's also a disorder that can really interrupt sleep. Okay, when you're dreaming, your eyes should be moving, your body should not. Okay, so this is dream enacting behavior. It can be like laughing, talking, punching, kicking. Typically it's the partner, the bed partner who talks about this and, uh, and tells me, um, I can't sleep with Joe anymore. Um, I'm in the other room <laughs> nowadays because you just really can't sleep. Um, this can be really severe. And in fact, I'm just gonna show you this video here on the right here of a patient who's having restless leg. So this REM sleep behavior can be so severe that it can actually, um, you can injure yourself during sleep by punching or kicking at things. Um, you can even fall out of bed and injure yourself as a result of this behavior. So it really needs to be recognized and treated. Um, if you're not sure about it, again, I wanna go back to that sleep study um, to really diagnose this disorder, okay? Uh, again, this can be a risk factor and onset can predate your symptoms. And often I get a story that patients may have had these symptoms for years and then it's starting to peter out, okay? All right. All right, so what should you do about this, okay? First of all, safety, 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 okay? So secure the bedroom and your partner. So if you're sleeping with someone like this, you may wanna be in that other bedroom, okay? But make sure the person who's having the symptoms is safe. Um, if you need rail on the bed to make sure they don't fall out of the bed, that's important. Um, pillows, other things that can, you know, um, protect the patient who's having actually this behavior. Um, reduce medications or get rid of medications that might be causing this and then try to treat. Melatonin, that drug I already mentioned for folks who have insomnia, can be a really good initial treatment for this. Um, it's worth trying, but often patients need a higher dose than you see over the counter. So usually what you see is either one or three milligrams. Um, doses needed to treat uh, REM sleep behavior are typically in the order of 10 to 20 milligrams nightly, okay? And if that doesn't work, we have to move to stronger drugs, um, such as what class of medications we call benzodiazepines. And one of the longer acting drugs is called clonazepam. This is a controlled substance, but it can help with anxiety. It can help with this REM sleep behavior disorder as well. Um, it's worth trying. Sometimes we have to use both um, and try other medications. Um, disordered sleep, so sleep apnea, big deal in MSA. Um, of course, it's a big deal for uh, many people actually, uh, but quite common. Effectively treated with what's called CPAP or continuous positive pressure on the airway. Um, I'm gonna just skip through just in the interest of time. 
Another feature of multiple system atrophy that's fairly, that, that needs to be watched out is for what's called respiratory strider, <gasps> that kind of breathing, okay? So sleep apnea is where a patient stops breathing for a period of time and their oxygen levels actually drop, okay? And that can happen multiple times at night. Strider is actually um, high pitch this in, inspiratory respiratory strand or restriction, okay, of the airway. And this can occur up to 15 to 40 percent of patients with MSA. And it can even be an initial manifestation of disease as well, okay. Um, so if you're suspicious that your partner has this kind of breathing pattern, you need to let your doctors know, okay, because this needs to be treated, okay. It can be treated. Um, typically, positive airway pressure is helpful for patients, but in severe cases, Sometimes a tracheostopy is necessary, okay? And there are other alternative treatments listed here as well. Um, there is such a thing called this floppy esophagus, esophagus as well. That's where the back of the esophagus kind of can sort of um, track. And so you, this is another important feature to look out for, okay? Um, special mention should be uh, given to this type of sleep apnea. So we talk about obstructive sleep apnea in multiple system atrophy. This can also be what we call a central, pad, a central issue, uh, a brain issue. And this could be um, that the brain is sending the wrong signals to the breathing muscles, okay? So just like can give the wrong signals to blood pressure centers and urinary centers can give the wrong signals in terms of breathing as well. Um, and this sometimes requires a different form of breathing apparatus, what's called like a BiPAP, okay? Um, so that's just a really quick overview of sleep issues. So I'm going to take questions. We'll all come back as a panel. Um, I think what we're going to do right now is, sorry, this went over. Uh, everyone take, what, 15? Yeah, take 15 minutes um, and then come back. We'll all be up here. Um, we're going to go around the room and collect all of your questions um, and sift through them while you're doing that, okay? Thanks so much for your attention.